I am Anil Kumar and now in the test we are into the section which involves thinking and applications. These three questions will really make a difference in your preparation for the test. Question number 10. A committee of four students is selected at random from a group consisting of seven boys and five girls. Given that there is at least one girl in a committee, calculate the probability that there are exactly two girls in the committee. Now this is an excellent example on conditional probability. Let us uh, define our events and let us say that the event A is. So basically you define the events from what you need to calculate. So it says that given that there is at least one girl in the committee, right? So, so this statement gives you first event and that is that there is at least one girl, right? So we say there is at least one girl in the committee, right? So that is event A. And the second one is calculate the probability that there are exactly two girls. So that is B, that there are exactly two girls. Correct. So that is the way to define the events. Now clearly we want to calculate the probability that there is exactly two girls that means B in the committee when it is given that there is at least one girl, right? So what we need to calculate here is the probability of B when A is given, right? That is what we need to calculate, correct? Now Probability of B when A is given to us is intersection of these two. We can say probability of A and B. You could write in any order, it doesn't really matter. A and B, right? Divided by the probability of A. Probability of A. So that should give you the answer. Now let us find what is the probability of A. That is, there is at least one girl. Now to find at least one girl, we can say that means we will do complement of uh, one minus no girls, right? That is all boys committee, correct? So we could say the probability of A is equals to one minus. We're looking for probability of all boys. Do you understand? So all boys. Let me write here first all boys. Is it okay? So, so probability of all boys. So that will mean if I take away all boys, then we have at least one girl. So I hope the concept is clear to you, right? So one. Now, if there are all boys, how many boys are there? We have seven boys and five girls. So total is 12, right? So total is 12 for us. And out of seven boys, we are selecting a committee of four students. So it becomes seven combination four. So all four have been selected from these seven boys. And total combinations which we had is we had an option to choose from 12, correct? So it becomes over 12 C four. So that becomes your uh, value for probability of A. So let's calculate this. So we have one minus or let's calculate this part and then we'll take away from one so we have 7 c 4 divided by 12 c 4 which is equal to 7 over 99 1 over 7 over 99 and now do 1 minus the answer and that gives you 92 over 99 So that is probability of A. Now, when we say exactly two girls in the committee and their intersection, this is what we have to find. 
So what is the intersection of the this into A and B? So basically, if there are two girls in the committee, then since the committee is of four students, then there are two boys in that committee. Is that okay? So let's calculate this. That is probability of A intersection B. Right? So we are looking for now, we say at least one girl and two girls exactly. So we want exactly two girls in the committee. So it becomes out of five girls, we are selecting two girls. Since we are to select four, the rest two are selected from the boys, correct? So that is times uh, from boys are seven, right? So seven C two. Rest are selected from the boys and total combinations are 12 C four for us, correct? So that becomes the answer. And let's calculate this now. How much is this? So we have 5C2 times 7C2 divided by 12C4, 12C4, which is equal to 14 over 33, right? So that is 14 over 33 for us. Now, uh, now we can find the probability, right? So probability of exactly two girls when there is at least one girl will be equal to the ratio of these two, right? So probability of intersection is 14 over 33 divided by 92 over 99, right? So that should be the answer. So we have 14 over 33 in the calculator. We'll divide this by, uh, within brackets, let me write 92 divided by 99, and that gives you 21 over 46. So we get 21 over 46, almost 50% in our answer, right? So that is how you're going to find this particular solution. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear we defined a from the given question as the event that there is at least one girl and b that exactly two girls in the committee right and then using the compound angle formula for conditional probability we got our answer so i hope the steps are absolutely clear to you feel free to write your comments and share your views Thank you. Let's move on to uh, question number 11 now. Question number 11. Three identical balls with different colors are distributed in three baskets. Find the conditional probability that all the three occupy the same cell, that means same basket, given that at least two of them are in the same cell, right? So basically what we have here is that there are three baskets, correct? or cells, whatever you may call. We want all the three balls to be in, in one basket, right? So as you can see, with three balls, total number of combinations, which we have is three times three times three, which is 27. So that is total possible. Correct. So any ball can be placed in any one of these. So we have 27 ways of putting these three balls in three different baskets. Now balls are as such identical means shape and uh, figure wise, however size wise, however they have let's say different colors, right? So they can be distinguished. That's what it means, right? Now let us define our events. So what do we need to find? Find the conditional probability that all three occupy same cell. So we'll say event A is all three in same cell, right? So that is what we'll have. And then second is given that at least two of them are in the same cell. So that becomes the second 
uh, event right so two at least given that at least two at least two in the same cell right so so from here you can also see that a is subset of b right so a is subset of b right so if we have at least two that means three is included in it correct so that is very important to understand now let us find the probability of event b that is to say that at least two in the same cell that means what that means that the one minus that balls us put in different sets right so it is one minus uh, probability all in different sets all in different cells right so so if we take away that we get at least two in one cell right so that is very clear now this could be written as one minus now if i place one ball here for the first ball, I have three combinations, correct? Three ways. So I have a choice of putting, or you can say in this, we could put any one of these three. Here we could put any one of two left and then one. So we get three times, two times, one. Those are the ways. And total ways are 27. So that becomes the probability, right? And now you can calculate this answer, which is, 27 minus 6, which is 21 over 27, right? So that is the probability of event B. Now, what is the probability of A? That is, all are in the same cell. Probability of A is either all can be in cell 1 or in 2 or in 3, right? So there are only three ways. So it is 3 out of total of 27 or you can say 1 over 9, right? So, yeah, I mean, I should have reduced this also then. Okay, so we can divide this also by 3. So, 3 times 7 and 3 times 9, 7 over 9. Okay, that makes sense. Now, how about the intersection of this? Now, as you can see that intersection of a and b that means a and b is also 1 over 9 since all these are subsets if 3 are there in 1 it is a subset of at least 2 perfect so now we could actually use our formula and find the answer we need to find the conditional probability that all three occupy the same cell now all three are in the same cell that means given that at least two are in one so probability of a when we are given b this is what we need to find which is probability of a i mean intersection b divided by probability of b right so which is one over nine divided by seven over nine or one over seven is now the answer for us okay so i hope the steps are absolutely clear Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and I'll also like you to go through this once again to understand the whole concept. Now that brings us to the last question, question number 12. We are almost at the end now, the very last question for us, question number 12. Two integers are selected at random from the numbers from 1 to 11. If the sum is even, so the first event is sum is even find the probability that both the numbers are odd so as you read you can clearly identify the events which need to be defined is that clear to you right so so we have prob a event a as sum is even right so so what we're looking for here is that the sum is even and the event B for us is that both the numbers are odd. So both numbers are odd, right? What do we need to find? 
It says, find the probability that both the numbers are odd if the sum is even. So, so we want to find the probability of B when A is given to us, which is probability of B intersection A divided by probability of A. So that is how we are going to find it. Now, let's see how to find probability of A and B. So the first one is that the sum is even. Now, what we have is numbers 1 to 11. So what we are given is numbers, let me write here, 1, 2, 3, 4, till, till 11, right? Now in this, how many are even numbers and how many are odd? Since we start and end with odd number, we have more odd numbers, right? So in this case, we have six odd numbers. You can count 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Six odd and five even numbers. Is it okay? Total are definitely 11. Now, two integers are selected at random from the numbers 1 to 11. If the sum is even, that means either both are odd or both are even, right? So that will make the sum as even, right? And now let us find how to find when the sum is even, right? So the probability for A, which is the even sum, is we could have two odd numbers or we could have combination of two even numbers, right? So that gives us as 6C2 plus that is the sum of two odd numbers or we could select two even numbers. Is that okay? So 5C2 divided by total 11 numbers in all and we are selecting two. So that becomes the probability in of A for us, correct? So let's figure out how much is this. So we have six C2 plus five C2 divided by 11 C2 and that gives us 5 over 11, right? So that is the probability of event A. Now, both numbers are odd. Now, how do we find that both numbers are odd? So both numbers of odd is a subset of this, right? So both are odd, probability of B, which is also subset of this is 6C2 over 11C2, correct? So that is both are odd. So let's calculate this. 6C2, 11C2 is 6C2 divided by 11C2 equals to 3 over 11. Now what is intersection of A and B? So intersection of A and B is also both are odd, right? Because A is odd plus even, right? So that is C 3 over 11, which is same as the the probability of b is it okay so both are odd so that is the intersection now we can apply the formula and find the answer so probability of b when a occurs a has already happened is intersection which is 3 over 11 divided by 5 over 11 and that gives you the answer 3 over 5 correct so that is how we are going to solve this question. So I hope the concepts are absolutely clear. You are well set for your own test. Feel free to write your comments, share your views. And if you like and subscribe my videos, that will be great. Also, share your test paper. Thanks for watching and all the best.